Bee breeding is a pain. You have to breed the new species you want, take your breeder bee, combine it with the new species, and hope that the good stats pass down. Check it with the bealizer, see that they didn't, combine it with another breeder bee, check again, and again, and again, over and over, and hope that your new bee doesn't accidentally convert or crossbreed into the wrong species, or else you have to restart the whole damn cycle again, all for a chance at passing down traits that you already have. It's repetitive and honestly annoying. This problem illustrates the core reason as to why bees are so disliked despite their overwhelming power. They're just too finicky. If only gen industry wasn't locked to LUV, so you didn't have to suffer with bees for six technological ages. If only there was a lower tiered option that allowed you to easily manipulate bees without needing to go through the crossbreeding shenanigans. If only there was a way to easily insert any stats and species of your choosing into a bee. Well, for the low low cost of a bunch of HP circuits and your willingness to deal with bees, you too can have access to all of these benefits and more in an all inclusive package with the genetics mod. Just to preface, this is not a bee breeding guide, and I'll assume you have at least the fundamentals of bee breeding down. If you do want to learn about bees though, the uncontested best resource is the official GTNH wiki page, linked in the description. Also, one note is that genetics and genistry are two completely different bee adjacent mods, but genistry is mislabeled as genetics very often, due to the legendary in-game documentation of genetics being such S-tier dog water that the only reasonable assumption is that the lack of information is an intentional choice from the mod authors, as the questbook will just shamelessly lie to your face on multiple occasions with as much remorse as Nintendo pricing their games at an extremely affordable $79.99. Colorful references aside, I'll be talking about the HV Binny's genetics mods for the remainder of this video. Before the how though, let's first get into the why. What makes genetics useful? It allows for the permanent acquisition of the best stats for your bees, and crucially, also allows you to download the species of whatever bee you want. It's stored inside of the gene database, in which any combination of speed, lifetime, species, and more can be directly inserted into a larva and then subsequently turned into a drone. It essentially trivializes most of the tedium that comes with getting a new species, and makes keeping a physical backup stock of bees entirely obsolete. With that all being said, to understand how the process works, we'll have to introduce the genetic single blocks. And here they are. First up, the incubator. This creates all the bacteria and enzymes needed to power some of the other single blocks and allows finished larvae to turn into drones through liquid growth medium. Next is the gene pool, with the sole purpose of creating raw DNA at the expense of some mandatory volunteers supplied by a dedicated alveary. These two machines create the general backbone for passives needed for the entire setup. Following these two are the research duo, the isolator and the sequencer. The former takes in drones and isolates a random gene from them and has a small chance of destroying the drone in the process. You then insert this DNA sequence into the sequencer to log the specific gene into your database, permanently accessible through the gene database. The sequencer does take fluorescent dye to make, but all the passive inputs will be covered in a later section. These two machines essentially operate on a closed loop of creating and scanning a sequence until all the drones are consumed. Next up is the polymerizer. Once you have some entries inside of your database, you're able to extract them into apiary serums, which are then put inside of the polymerizer for charges. Each charge equates to a singular use with a maximum of 16, but the serums are infinitely rechargeable, and can be smelted to turn back into their empty variants. The final single blocks are the splicer and inoculator. Both of these allow the insertion of specific genetics through the use of apiary serums directly into a larva to change their genetic makeup, but have two key differences. The splicer takes an enormous amount of RF to power in exchange for processing speed, while the inoculator is both extremely slow and takes an additional bacteria vector input at the cost of power consumption. Before the system is operational though, there are a few things that need to be passively obtained. All of the listed suggestions are tier locked to HP or less, but there are better options as you tier up, like the Extreme Industrial Greenhouse or Extreme Entity Crusher. The items you need for a fully passive genetic setup is sugar, ethanol, growth medium, fluorescent dye, and then optional gold nuggets. Growth medium and fluorescent dye are both mixer recipes with even more inputs, but all these are relatively easy to automate in HP. I won't go over exactly how to acquire all these items, but renewable sources of each input will be shown on screen right now. Again, better options do exist later, but typically your genetic setup doesn't use a lot of materials, so keeping the throughput of your passives relatively low shouldn't be a bottleneck. Alright, so with all that talking behind us, I can finally get into the actual real-world genetics part of the example. So, first thing is that I'm using Ender.io conduits to transport everything, and because item filters are a pain, I'm instead using conduit colors to organize everything. So they'll be shown on screen right now, but uh, don't worry about them exactly, you can obviously have whatever colors you want. But for me personally, I have sugar on white, growth medium on yellow, drones, enzymes, and the isolator sequencer loop on red. And the only thing that you need to worry about is that there are two item filters, and both of them are for the bee breeding area. So we want a dedicated bee area here that is constantly breeding Majestics, or any bee with 4x fertility. And the thing is, is that we want to blacklist the princess into the gene pool, 
because the gene pool takes in the bees to make raw DNA and if we sacrifice the princess then obviously we can't make any more drones. And the other thing is the isolator because we only want to be scanning bees that we care about and we realistically don't care about this breeding stock so we just want to blacklist any of the drones or the queen that's going into here. And other than that everything should be fine because the ender IO fluid conduits have a built-in filtering system so everything in the fluid conduits are filtered like here we have insert ethanol and output liquid DNA on the gene pool. And every single machine that's using a fluid is filtered for whatever fluid that they're using. So nothing should ever conflict. One other thing to mention about the breeding stock is that they are powered by five electrical stimulators, each one with one intricate circuit board with four obsidian electron tubes. And each one lowers the lifespan by 19%. So when you have five of them, it forces the B cycle to finish in one tick which creates a lot more drones than the gene pool can ever keep up with. So this is mostly optional, but it can't hurt. And if you're wondering where the, the princess is, it's there. It's just that the alveolar output is full. So if I take one of these out, it'll come and it'll make more. The first section here is the passive area, and its main use is to produce products that the rest of the genetic setup uses. It takes in the ethanol, sugar, and growth medium from wherever you source it, along with needing a passive stocking alveolar for drones. I've already gone over the gene pool a little bit and how that works, but I haven't really mentioned these incubators. There's four of them here, and each of them make a different thing, which is written on the signs here. The format that I'm using for these signs, by the way, is that the output is on the top row, and the inputs are underneath, which is relatively straightforward. One thing to mention is that the bacteria and the polymerizing bacteria is made by duplicating itself with the growth medium and the NC on there means non-consumable, so it just infinitely replicates itself. The thing is, is that you're going to need to source a little bit of it yourself before being able to do this recipe, and you can do it the Greg Tech way, but the genetics way is a lot easier. And the genetics way is actually a little bit hidden, because if you look at the recipe for bacteria, it doesn't even show that you can make it with an incubator, but if you look at the incubator for the uses, it shows up here. If you take some liquid growth medium and wheat, you can make a little bit of bacteria, and you take a little bit of that bacteria, and then you combine it with bone meal to make a little bit of polymerizing bacteria. And once you have tiny bits of the source, you can just slam it with a bunch of growth medium to infinitely replicate it. So it's pretty nice. Next up are the research stations. These two looping here are the isolator and sequencer, and all they do is constantly cycle between isolating and sequencing a drone's DNA until their entire genetic makeup is on the funny iPad here, where then you can use a serum array to select whatever stats that you want. Uh, you might notice the world accelerator here, but it's completely optional. You don't need it here, but if you were going to have a world accelerator, this would be the best place to put it as the whole sequencing and scanning of the drones takes a while. You're going to need fluorescent dye to power the sequencer, and you're going to need a tiny bit of blink sequences to run it through, but they're constantly reused, so you only need a little bit. So I put four here because that's the max amount that you can have inside of the isolator, but no more than that is what you really need. The polymerizer over here gives charges to the serums once you can make them and takes in liquid DNA, polymerized bacteria, and gold nuggets. Although it's completely optional, but I'd highly recommend it because it speeds up the process by a lot. To use it, you open up the gene database and then you just pick whatever genes that you want inside of the serum array. So let's say I wanted shortest lifespan and blinding production speed. Then all you do is that you take this and then you put it inside the polymerizer and it'll slowly start charging it. You can see that it says 0 out of 16, so you just need to put it into the polymerizer before it can actually work. And the more traits that you want, the longer it'll take to charge, but honestly you don't need to world accelerate it, because this should realistically always be at 16 charges when you're not using the setup. The last part of the setup is the actual insertion of the genes. Like I mentioned before, you can either use the inoculator or the splicer, but I'd recommend using the splicer due to its speed and not needing bacteria vector to work. It does take a lot of energy to run, but that can be realistically circumvented by having two vibrant capacitor banks. These look kind of scary to make, but as long as you use the quad lithium cell battery recipe instead of the small scenarium battery one, you should be fine because all this takes is a bunch of HV circuits and HV batteries. The entire setup itself actually passively uses less than one MV amp, but I have an HV amp going into this power generator just to fill up the buffer faster whenever the splicer is being used. To actually use it, you just have to put the larva and the charged serum array inside of it like this, and then it'll start using a ton of energy to slowly inject the larva with the genes you have in the serum array. Once you have the actual larva that you want, you take the larva in an incubator with some liquid growth medium, and then it'll slowly start working until eventually a drone comes out. Like that. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing an in-world practical example of this genetics uh, whole setup. So here I'm going to be breeding a iridium drone as an example. So I'm going to put, I'm going to charge up the Crimson Frenzy to guarantee me a mutation. And there, we have the iridium princess and the iridium drones. And then from here, we're just going to put the all the bees inside of the isolator and then the isolator sequencer loop is going to happen where this APRS DNA sequence is going to get slowly well sequenced and then added into the gene database. One random trait that the iridium drone has is going to be added onto the iPad where you can uh, take it. 
while that waits, we're going to take one of our larva from this swarming alviary, and then we're going to inject it with the good stats that we have that aren't the, the gene. So here we have production blinding, lifespan longest, temperature tolerance on both, flower book, and no effect. So we put it on here, it will slowly start injecting all the things. And then the sequencer will slowly start downloading all the genetic makeup of the drones that we put in until we can access them easily through the gene database with serums. Once the Iridium drones are finished sequencing inside of the sequencer loop, all you have to do is take the gene database with the empty serum bio and take the Iridium species. From there, you just put it in the polymerizer to give it one charge. Once it has a charge in it, take it out and put it inside of the splicer with the perfectly modified Meadows larva that you have, or any, any larva. As you can see, this one has the longest life, blinding worker, blah blah blah. So put that in there with the apiar serum and it'll slowly start injecting it to change its species. Once you finish injecting the species genome inside of the larva, just take it out and put it inside of the incubator to turn it into an actual drone, like so. Hopefully this was enough to convince you about the powers of genetics. I'll have the world download for the setup in the description if you want a closer look at the conduit filtering, and besides that, you can always reach out to me directly or the official GTNC Discord for any help. And with that all said, just remind yourselves that the bees will always have the moral high ground over ICT crops. Hopefully that helps you sleep better at night. Goodbye!